Alright guys, it's Lunar here with another daily mod update video for Xbox One and PS4 in Skyrim Special Edition. There are actually quite a lot of mods out since yesterday, which happens usually on a Monday, but we do have only a couple of big mods, and what I'm actually going to do today is showcase those in separate videos, as we have loads of little small mods out, but I don't want to put the big ones and the small ones together, as we'll have loads of small ones missed out. This way we kind of get everything covered. So I don't know if I'm going to do this for every day, but for today, we're going to have an update with this, all the smaller mods in one video, which I think there's around 11, and later on I will showcase two of the bigger mods. Both of them are for PS4 and Xbox One, which is quite unusual, but I'm sure if the PS4 versions are different, I will tell you in the video when it's out, because right now I've only had a quick look at them. So anyway, before we start, as always, if you do enjoy today's video, hit the like button and share it anywhere you can, I really do appreciate the support. So we can just jump into our first mod. The first mod of the day, and first off I won't mention in all of these that they are small mods, as most of them are small mods, but this mod is a lightweight fix to one thing in game. Basically it gives Aya of the Skull Village a Skull Coat and Skull Boots, and that's it. It's a mod for anyone who wants this small fix, I guess if you're bothered by this kind of thing, which personally I'm not, but I know that some people are, which is fine. This is a mod for you who wants to fix this without downloading an entire child overhaul mod, or one that adds in loads of other fixes to the game. So it's just this one simple fix. So if that's something that you want, then this mod is available. The next mod adds a vendor book called Lessons on Dirty Tricks, which will give you an ability that increases your percentage of doing critical hits while in sneak mode. 25% chance of evading melee damage, and power attack slowdown time when you are sneaking. A mod that adds a new power perfect for any sneak character like an assassin or thief. So that's all this mod really does and we can move on to our next mod. The next mod is called the Pacifist Follower. The Pacifist Follower is a mod for those of you who want to have a follower with you, but don't want them to steal any of your XP from getting kills. So when in combat, the Pacifist Follower, who's called Rosalind the Writer in the actual mod, or in my game, he's actually a male called Aengith the Male Writer, so I'm not sure how many different versions that are, will, whenever in combat, flee and hide. If he or she does engage, her health is set to 1, so even if they do attack enemies, they go down really quickly. The pacifist sneak level has been set to a huge level, so they can go undetected so enemies focus on you instead. The best strategy for the pacifist is to hide before a fight, get them to remain hidden and then fight enemies. So if you want to recruit her or him, they are located in the sleeping giant inn in Riverwood. Our next mod is one I really like, and it's called No Talk Detection. Basically this mod makes it so that enemies won't detect your loud companions, so talking, shouting or even barking if you happen to have a dog. And this makes playing a sneak character now far easier if you have a companion or follower. The mod only works if the enemy doesn't see you, so, so if that happens you will still be detected. It's only noises that your followers make instead, so keep that in mind when you are sneaking. Okay, so next up we have another follower kind of mod, and it's called Essentials Need Healing. This is a tweak to followers that I guess makes them a bit more realistic. With this mod, once an essential character is down, they stay down. And that is until you either heal them with a healing spell, or you change cells. So downed allies will automatically follow you again. After being downed once, you go inside another cell. So like if you were to go through a loading door or into a city or something like that. This is the perfect mod for anyone who is playing a healer as their main class and needs a way to actually make healing essential to survive. So as a healer, if you don't heal your follower, who is most likely doing all the damage, you will probably die. So a cool mod that improves the role playing aspects of a healer. Our next mod is a cool one called No Quiver for Bound Bow. If you guys are like me, you will love to use bow and arrows, but hate to have the quiver equipped. For me, I like to play in third person a lot and the quiver just kind of obstructs your view as I like to be zoomed in as much as possible in third person, which is a problem with the quiver, not so much when you have your weapon equipped, but when you put it away you zoom in even further and I think the quiver takes up too much space. So with this mod that no longer happens, you will still see the arrow in the game, but you will appear to pull them from the air, which I guess isn't a problem, as you're using a conjured bow. Now I hope this mod author adds a no quiver for regular bows as well, and I will definitely download it. So if you guys are looking for a no quiver and you're a conjurer, this mod is perfect for you. Okay, so we can move on to our next mod, which is also archery related. Aim True Archery mod is a mod that I'm going to keep installed. I'll tell you guys why, but first off, what this mod does is it allows you to shoot any target with your arrow based on where your crosshair is pointing. Basically, it removes the arc effect from arrows at closer range, which I admit the vanilla way is far more realistic. You know, you aim up to hit a target far away as the arrow will start to arc in a downward trajectory due to, well, gravity. But the reason I want this mod is that not it removes that effect, it's the fact that I can now fire arrows far more quickly to targets that are close and mid-range. 
Since to reach targets far away in game, you need to pull down your bowstring back to get enough power to hit them. Well, now you no longer need to do that with this mod. You can rapidly fire arrows. I'm just thinking of Legolas in Helm's Deep when he's killing things rapidly. That's why I really like this mod, because I can kind of do that now as well. You can see from the video, you still need to aim up at longer ranges, so at pretty far distances, it doesn't really make much difference to the bow. But close at mid ranges, you can definitely kill things much easier. Next up, we have a mod that adds to the game a fix to the more beast type races and adds in a bit more immersion to the game. Better Claws and Gauntlets aims to make it so any beast race that uses claws in Skyrim, so Khajiit and Argonians essentially, can now equip gloves and gauntlets without any distortion, clipping, misshaping, or any other issues that currently plague the vanilla game. So you can now have your claws out and still have an awesome armor equipped at the same time and have it actually look cool. So obviously it really only works with fingerless gloves, as just regular gloves will cover your claws anyway. So a little fix, that makes a big change I think, to your clawed character. So we can move on to our next mod. Our next mod is called Weapons of Many Skills. A cool mod that is for anyone who wants to use one style of weapon, but at the same time train up a separate skill tree. So for example this mod adds to the game now a bow called the Bow of the Arrow. It is a bow that trains up your one handed skill. You get the Bow of Grip that trains up your two handed skill as well. The mod also adds in swords, axes, maces and daggers of finesse that train archery skill. So if you are say an archer but you want to train one handed, after you complete the archery skill tree, after all you may need to use a sword or dagger in close range combat, but you don't want to use anything other than a bow to train up your one handed skill, well now you can do that with this mod. All the weapons are of Daedric quality as well, so they are actually worth using. So a cool mod and if you're looking for this stuff, check the ragged flag in in Riften. We've already seen two other mods from this author in regards to followers and marriage partners, and today we have another mod called Dongard Marriage Candidates. Now in the two previous videos I kind of went around and found some of these, but instead I decided just to show you guys what the mod author uploaded, as you actually get to see all the followers in the video. This mod adds to Skyrim 19 brand new NPCs, who you can recruit and marry in game, that are all based around Dawnguard characters. So that means more vampires and vampire followers for you to recruit and marry. The mod as always tries to make the NPCs fit into the vanilla game in a more lore friendly way, and the 19 NPCs will appear in various towns, cities, Fort Dongard, and loads of them in Castle Volcahar. Of course this mod is aimed at making the amount of managed partners in game far more diverse, but you can also recruit any of these NPCs as just your followers. They are all essential, they level up to 80, and have the basic stats one handed, archery, light armour and sneak, which seems to be the default stat for NPCs, and they will equip whatever items you give them. So they are pretty decent in combat as well. Overall, any mod that adds in more NPCs and makes the game a bit more diverse is worth downloading. Even if you don't plan to recruit any of them, between the two marriage candidate mods and the more Hearthfire Stewards mods from this author, you still get 65 brand new NPCs who are wandering around towns and cities, which is cool in itself having more populated cities, so it's definitely three mods that are worth downloading. Our next mod aims to bring back the power and excitement of the Keening Sword. That was a cool weapon in Morrowind, but somehow is not very good in Skyrim. So the mod adds a new ability to Keening called Keening's Craft. This significantly increases value, adds infinite charge, and Keening is now upgradable to legendary quality, plus some additional tweaks and fixes. So the original enchantment for the weapon in Skyrim is Keening's Sting. It absorbs 10 magicka, 10 health, and 10 stamina. Well now the sword does the following. New abilities, so you get increased critical damage modifier to 4. Keening's Sting, which is infinite charge. And Keening's Craft, fortifies stamina by 25 points. Fortify speed by 10% and you take 20% less fall damage, and the price of the weapon has increased to 4000 gold. So if you're looking to get an improved keening, after all, it's a really cool sword, then this mod is definitely for you. Our final mod is called Dragon Reach Danger Room, and if you watched yesterday's mod showcase video, you will recognise this from the Comfy Breeze Home mod. Well, inside of the Breeze Home was a new room called the Danger Room, a sort of arena. Well, this mod adds the Danger Room to the dungeons of Dragon Reach instead. The danger room is full of frozen enemy NPCs like bears, spiders, trolls and giants and so on. You get a control panel with lots of switches on it that will unfreeze these enemies. You can either fight them yourself or watch them fight each other, so here are all the features that this mod actually adds. The table with the control switches for each enemy display, you could choose to activate one of the enemies or all of them at the same time. There's also a reset switch which allows you to put all the enemies back to the original spots even after they're dead. 17 enemy displays that do not contain items upon death, so you can kill these enemies but they don't have any loot on them. Stair area is set as a safe zone that will reset switches. Auto invisibility after activating a switch, 
So once you activate the switches, you become invisible to the enemies until you attack them. So overall, guy, a really cool mod and definitely one I think you should download and try out as it's a lot of fun. Well, guys, there we have it. Pretty much most of the mods that were released in the last 24 hours for Skyrim Special Edition on Xbox One, PS4 or both. I have two bigger mods I wanted to showcase in a bit more detail, so I will get started on those. I'm not sure how long those videos will be or how long they will take to be released, but I wanted to look at them in more detail and I will try and release them today if possible. If you did enjoy today's video, please like, comment and subscribe as always. Have an awesome day and I will see all of you guys later. See you then. Guys, later.